Hello, and welcome to another episode of OpenNMS 101. In this lesson, we're going to continue on the work we did in uh, Module 4-1, where we did uh, an introduction to notifications. We're going to build on that uh, with what I hope is a much shorter module, where we're going to talk specifically about notification commands. If you remember from the last lesson, we created a notification path, a destination path, where we sent an email to an on-call role, we then sent it a minute later, we escalated to a group, and then we escalated to an individual user. And in all three cases, we sent an email. That was the command we used. Well, maybe we want to do something else. I can remember uh, I was in Singapore many, many years ago, and the customer um, actually wanted the sound of a klaxon, you know, the do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do. Basically, their third shift operators weren't exactly the most dedicated um, employees, and sometimes they would kind of doze off in the middle of the night when something critical would happen. So what we did is we mounted a speaker way up um, near the ceiling in the knock, and this ceiling was maybe 14, 15 feet tall, and ran a cable from there into the back of the uh, OpenMS server. Uh, it did actually have a, an audio card in it, and we were able to send, um, basically play a WAV file that had that klaxon sound. We're going to show you how to do something like that from within OpenNMS. So here's our exercise. The command we're going to create is uh, based on syslog. We're going to actually send a syslog message. I know that doesn't sound super sexy, but it's actually quite useful. We had one customer who had a kind of a manager manager's piece that wanted to get information from OpenNMS. They had an ability to do that through syslog. So if we could get OpenNMS events into syslog, it would allow them to uh, send that upstream. So that's what we did. So we're going to add the syslog command to the system. Then we're going to edit our path for class destination path and add that in addition to the Java email, we'll add that as a command. Now, the notification system has an ability to match up events with down events in the sense of notices. So basically, if an event comes in, it can clear notices based upon a down event. And so we figured we'd use our two events. We have our happiness event and our unhappiness event, which is what we used last time. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to actually send in the unhappiness event, cause the uh, notice to trigger, and then we'll use the happiness event to auto-acknowledge it before we um, escalate. And so it'll show you that that works. Um, so moving on, I'm going to jump actually to my... Um, to my shell here, and I'm going to show you the notification commands file. So here's the notification commands file, and I want you guys to look right down here. I'll kind of make this a little clearer. Here is the Java email command that we were using for our destination path. If you wanted to change the name of this to email, here's where you would do it. Just change this name from Java email to email. Now, the first attribute here, binary equals false, this means it is a Java class. We're going to actually try to execute a Java class. If you are a Java programmer, you can build your own classes. And this is highly recommended simply because of the scalability. Uh, every time we run a binary command, we actually have to fork, uh, uh, fork exec a shell, run the command, see what comes back, close the shell, etc. And there's some overhead in that. In this case, if it's a Java command, it's a lot more uh, efficient. Now, the contact type here, you see this here, is email. This actually comes from the user. So um, when we send a, if you remember when we created our user, we had fields like email, pager email, uh, numeric, uh, numeric pin, various things like that, XMPP account. This is where we set this up. So we're going to send an email. And we know this because this is, it's, this is just something hard coded in the Java mail notification strategy, which is what we're using for here. And then we're going to send dash subject dash email address and the text message, um, which is the long message in the, um, in the notice that we set up. And so this is a binary command. It's pretty simple. Now, let's look at, well, excuse me, that's a Java command. So let's look at a binary command. This is the command we're going to add. 
So as you can see, we're calling this syslog. This is how it'll show up in the GUI. And then we're going to execute the command user bin logger. There's a little comment here. Now, when I, when I talk about this in class, I, I kind of stress the, the person who wrote this code, English was not their first language. And I honestly think they confused the term switch and substitution. So anywhere you see a substitution here, it means that OpenNMS is going to just send that to the command verbatim. So this command right here is going to basically be, I'll just add it up top. So it'll be user bin logger space dash P, because that's our first substitution. The next substitution is local zero warning. So we'll put that in there. And the next thing is dash T, which I believe is like a facility code. And we're gonna use OpenNMS. And then you have this switch. This is actually going to substitute the numeric message, which is the short message, from our notice. So this will be whatever the whatever the numeric message is. That's going to go in here. So I honestly think that you know we refer to this like dash p and dash t. We refer to them as switches, and I think these should be switches, and the term switch should be a substitution. Uh, there is an open bug on this. Uh, it's an uh, enhancement request. I'm hoping to switch these. Uh, it hasn't been addressed yet. I'm not sure it will. It's not a super high priority. So you're lucky for listening to this lesson because you know that, hey, substitution basically means switch, and switch means we're substituting something. Okay. Now, the last thing to take out of this is this um, streamed equals true. This basically, if it's streamed, it will allow for carriage returns and send a control D at the end of the message. Um, some things like the mail command uh, on the command line need that. So um, let me just copy this. And let's just kind of demonstrate what's going to happen here. So I'm going to quit out of here without making any changes. And then I sent this message, whatever the numeric message is. And if I go to var log and I tell messages, there we go. There is our syslog. So came from OpenNMS. There's whatever the numeric message is. It was actually logged to local zero warning. So uh, you can change that if you want. Uh, so that's what we're going to try to do. Now, um, the changes I made to notification commands, you can add those yourself. But I also added, if I go to... Uh, if I go to the training, www.openms.org slash capital T training and click on config under exercise four, we now have these two, this command here. So if you want, actually that's the wrong one. So notification commands. So at the very, very bottom, you'll see here is, whee, here is the syslog command that we added. So you can just copy this down if you would like, or cut and paste. Remember, if you're cutting and pasting, be sure to look at source, because that way you'll get the more unadulterated file versus the uh, um, the one with the dashes that won't parse. So anyway, the keys parts here, remember binary equals true, which means we're gonna to try to execute a command. This is a fully qualified path to the command, and then the various and sundry things we're going to send to it. Now, the next thing, getting back to the slides, so there's the Java notification command. This is for the Java mail notification strategy. Um, here's the binary one that we just did. Now, one of the wonderful things about OpenMS that I like is the ability to uh, clear notices. I mentioned, uh, and I'll bring this up when we, we actually edit the path, but I mentioned that all notification paths, all the destination paths, have an initial delay. And I use this a lot. I usually set it to be about two minutes. And the idea is if we get a, 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 a down event, such as a node loss service event, I have up until two minutes for it to clear. If I get a node regain service event for that exact service, uh, it'll clear the notice. I won't get it. I won't get awoke uh, in the middle of the night for something that was a transient issue. If it's been down for more than two minutes, yeah, wake me up. I'm cool with that. So this is how that works. In the notifd configuration file right here, 
Uh, it, can, it controls a, a number of things, and we'll take a glance at it in a second. Uh, actually, we'll take a glance at it now because I think it shows up better than on the uh, on the uh, slides. So let me clear here. Again, this file is the notifd configuration file. So a few things to note about this. At the very top, you'll see this status equals on. This is a piece that controls that icon in the upper corner. Remember the big red button I was telling you about that can turn notices on or off globally? Again, no magic. This is how OpenMS knows that those notices are on or off. So status equals on means notices are off. Forget about all this other stuff. I keep removing it and it keeps getting put back. Um, I don't know why you'd ever want to change this, but this does allow you to, um, this is kind of controls how notices are selected from the database. The last, the next thing out of here I want to show you is this match all equals true. When OpenMS started, it was the first match one. So if you had multiple notices on something, the first match would win. And some people liked that. Um, I think that it's easier to match everything. So I can say, if this one event happens, send it to three different groups. I might send it to the group for that area. If it was in Singapore, I could send it to the Singapore group. If it was a database issue, I could send it to the database team. And I could also send it to the overall IT team. Again, this is the default that it'll match any notice that... Um, that the event matches and passes the filter. So you can change that if you want, but I suggest you leave it to true. And finally, here's how the auto acknowledge works. So here's how, notice this is the auto acknowledge tag. There's an, a slash auto acknowledge tag at the bottom. So this basically says if the UEI here, node regain service comes in, automatically acknowledge any notices where the UEI is node loss service, and the node ID for the node regain service event matches the node loss service. The interface ID for the node regain service event matches the node loss service. And the service ID matches for node loss service and node regain service. Does that make sense? You don't necessarily want one event to clear a service that might, you know, if I lose HTTP and DNS and DNS comes back up, we don't want it to clear the notices based upon HTTP. Now, notice we do another one of these for interface up. We'll clear interface down notices, but there's no service, just node ID and interface D. And notice node up clears notices for node down, and it's just based on node ID. Turns out you have to have at least one match. You can't leave that blank. And so while we don't have anything really associated with our happiness and unhappiness event, I added the node ID. So here we have class happiness, and here we have class unhappiness. So the class happiness event will acknowledge the class unhappiness event as long as the node ID in this event matches that event. Make sense? Now you can also change the resolution prefix. Now, one of the things we struggled with, I would really like to have a system that was more pairwise, that basically said, okay, when I send out a notice, I wanna, I wanna have an event that is the up event, and I wanna have an event that is the down event, and these criteria should be shared. OpenMS doesn't have that. Note if D is just based on events. And it, you know, even if you put the word up or the word down in the event, OpenMS doesn't care. It's a string. And so it doesn't know that one event is an up and one event is a down. So we struggled with this. In the original time, uh, when we originally wrote this, we actually had notices for node up and node down. And so what would happen is a node down uh, message would get generated. So node goes down. We send out a node down notice. And it starts an escalation. So it emails the group. Pages the group, emails the manager. The manager says, hey, we need to fix this. They fix it. They acknowledge the notice. Everything's fine. We get a note up. So the note up would get sent out, walk the same path. And so it would send an email out to the guys who got it. They go, oh, hey, yeah, I know that's up. We worked on it. They'd forget about it. Ten minutes later, they get a page. and go, damn it, why am I getting a page on this? I know it's up. Fine. And then the manager would get a page. and goes, yes, I know it's up. And then if it escalated beyond that, it would be waking up the VP and the president saying, I'm up, which was like uh, not good, you know, especially if they didn't get it down. So this is kind of funny because I asked the community, I was like, hey, you know, if we did this, we'd need some kind of way to match ups with downs. Well, it turns out, person in the uh, community pointed out, there is a table called users notified in the database that says for each notice who was notified and how. 
So we did have that information. And so we wrote some code that basically said, okay, if we have this automatic acknowledgement, if, if we have a down that, an up that clears a down, then we can send a message to just those people who got the down. But we didn't have an easy way to configure it or anything, so we used a telecom method. So in telecom, they have this, this tendency, they'll send an event out, say it's, uh, you know, this device is in yellow alarm. Well, when it's cleared, they will send the same exact event, but there'll be a cleared bit that's set. That basically says, here's the yellow alarm, but it's now cleared. So what we did is we basically said, okay, we're just going to send the same notice we sent out. So if it said node www.openms.org is down, we'll send the same thing out, except it'll say cleared node www.openms.org is down or resolved or whatever your favorite word or in your particular language should be. You can change that in this file. Does that make sense? So what, we, what I want you to take away from this configuration is that if we have a notice based upon class unhappiness and a class happiness event shows up, it'll automatically acknowledge all notices based upon unhappiness as long as the node IDs in both events match. And it'll send out the same notice that got sent out for the unhappiness event, except the subject line will have the word cleared in front of it. Make sense? And again, I put that up in the configuration as well, so you can just copy it down uh, instead of um, having to type all that in or cutting and pasting. Now, getting back to our exercise, at this point in time, so we're going to add the syslog command to notification commands. That's what we did. We edited notification commands.xml and added that syslog command, the string. At this point in time, you should restart OpenNMS. Most things dealing with notifications, including notification commands, are dynamic. You edit those files, it takes effect immediately. But in order to make this new command show up in the GUI, we have to restart OpenNMS. I'm sorry about that, but that's just the way it is. If you're hand editing all this stuff and you're not using the GUI, then you don't need to restart. But for the purposes of this class, we're going to restart. Now, what we're going to do is edit the destination path we did for class, which is called path for class. And we're going to add the syslog to uh, the first target. So let me go into my GUI. So here I am in my web console. So I'll go configure open NMS, configure notifications, configure destination paths. And we're going to edit the path for class. And we're going to edit our first target, on call. I'm going to still send to the on call person. I'm going to hit next. And where it says Java email, if I zoom down here, you'll see now there's a syslog. And I'm going to control click on syslog. So that'll highlight syslog and Java mail. Where is it? Java emails highlighted and syslog. I'll hit next. Notice this is our initial delay. I'm not going to set one, but that's what I was talking about. If you want, you can add an initial delay. I like two minutes. And if that auto acknowledgement kicks in, you will not get notified. It'll automatically acknowledge it. So I think that's kind of neat. So I'm going to finish before I navigate away from there. And that should do it. Now I'm going to go back to my main page. Now I cleared out all my notices, so I don't have any outstanding notices. And if I click on the on call schedule, you'll see that I am still on call, currently on call Taurus. So I should get the message. So I'll go back here. I'm going to go to my terminal window and I'm going to control R to go back through my history. And I'm going to look for my happiness event or unhappiness event. Now this is the event we sent. I have to change it just slightly. I'm going to add a dash n1. That sets the node to one. So when I send the event, it'll be associated with our local host node. And I need to have this match so that I can make the auto acknowledgement work. If I'm not using auto acknowledgement, it doesn't matter. But I have to use, I could use uh, service, I could use IP address. Um, and in this case, I'm just going to use the node. So I click that. Go back to my console. Notice there's one outstanding notice here. Give me a second and it'll come to me. If I click on the outstanding notice, you'll see it is assigned to localhost. So that's because we used the node one. If I click on the ID, you'll see that it was sent to Java email and it was sent to syslog at 511. So um, I'm going to go. Now, before I wait a minute, I'm just going to go and send the happiness event. So I sent the happiness event. Notice there's my mail. So I did get my email that uh, the class was unhappy. 
Now, if I refresh this, um, this notice, you'll see time replied and that it was auto-acknowledged. That's how auto-acknowledgement works. And so now none of this escalation should happen. So if I hit refresh here, again, there's that bug that will resort the, uh, the message. But nothing will happen. So I'm going to wait. And just to, just to prove that I'm right, I'll wait a minute. But what I want to look at now is not only so I can look at my mail. And you can see I've got my class is not happy email on the 23rd at 5.11. And then I got my cleared notice for class is not happy. That's that cleared thing coming into play. And now if I go to var log and tail my messages, you'll see I got the class is unhappy. And it was followed by cleared the class is unhappy. So my syslog's working. Now again, you can get really creative with this. You can send um, a klaxon. You can send. Um, uh, you can do pretty much anything um, that you can run on the OpenMS command line. Now be careful. If you're sending notices to a hundred people, you might need a really beefy box in order to to generate a hundred of whatever you're doing at the same time. But with um, with a little bit of planning. Chances are you could do it very, very well. I mean, one of the other things you could do is you could, you know, just send the script to one user and then have that user notify a bunch of people. Um, this is where our uh, initial trouble ticketing integration was. We actually had a notification class that would actually post to a website. So, uh, and it still exists. So, if you ever want, I believe it still exists. Um, so, if you wanted to, you could basically generate either an email or uh, an HTTP post that would go to a website perhaps of your trouble ticketing system, fill out some forms and send that as part of the notification. So going back to the slides, so we added our syslog command, we started OpenNMS to enable syslog to show up in the GUI. We edited our destination path for the class. We added syslog in addition to the Java mail by hitting that um, control click versus just a single click. We generated the unhappiness event with node equal one, that dash n1. We generated the happiness event to clear. And if I go back here, I'm going to refresh, and you can see we're done. No other messages were sent. So that got auto-acknowledged. So here's our syslog cleared. Here's where we send the event. And there we got the escalation. That's it. That's a short one. Um, I hope that's useful. Um, we will have some more lessons posted pretty soon. I uh, hope you're finding this enjoyable. And uh, thanks for your time.